Um, my background is uh, oh, first the thing points. Uh, I don't want to do a grand reveal at the end of this, right? So I want to let you know if you want to stick around or not. Uh, but uh, the key, the, the, by the way, extremely nervous. Uh, so the uh, the key takeaways from this talk are um, you keep, um, you know we hear a lot about data driven design or the, uh, data driven uh, uh, decisions, and um, I want to stress that uh, data driven is kind of a, a bad word, I guess, or uh, uh, not the not the approach that I think is the best. Um, generally, we, we talk about like data informed um, uh, decision making, and uh, because context is uh, critical uh, uh, with game design uh, specifically, uh, and uh, the, uh, usually the data can tell you a very different story with different contexts. Um, and the, the other part of it is, uh, you know, as a, as an analyst, so I'm, I'm less of a researcher, more of an analyst. Um, as an analyst, sometimes it's really scary to iterate on your um, uh, on your analyses or the KPIs that you present to the, to the developers. Uh, and but it's very important to to be able to iterate. So fostering this environment where iteration is um, accepted and embraced um, is, is paramount. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, uh, as uh, as an analyst, like if, without data integrity or trust. We, we have not. Uh, you know, if people don't trust your data, uh, you don't have a product anymore. So it's it's very important to to maintain that as much as possible. Uh, so who am I? Uh, I manage the Overwatch Analytics uh, group at, uh, at Blizzard Entertainment. I've uh, been at Blizzard for eight years, um, uh, and previously I worked on Hearthstone. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with our products, but. Um, this talk kind of assumes at least you have some familiarity with them. Uh, and uh, prior to this, I worked in you know tr traditional BI for a retail organization. Uh, personally, I'm a very you know I'm a hardcore competitive PC gamer. Uh, played games for you know well before I worked in them. Um, I'm a diamond player in Overwatch, and I was at the world first Ragnaros Guild back in 2005. Um, oh wow. <laughs> That's one that nobody really believes me at Blizzard because we don't have the data to, to prove it. So, um, so I'm going to try to uh, breeze through this. Uh, it's kind of like our team structure, but global insights is the you know the large uh, uh, the larger department that uh, uh, to which I belong. Uh, we're split into you know a couple of groups, a couple of analytics groups. We have publishing analytics, esports analytics, and franchise analytics, which is uh, franchise analytics is where I'm under. Um, and we, you know, we have uh, uh, our teams are structured. Uh, they're, they're franchise focused, and they have you know, a lead, um, a couple of analysts, data scientists, program managers, data engineers, and uh, quality assurance uh, um, uh, to help us out with some of the UAT. Uh, and we, our stakeholders are, you know, they span across uh, all the functions uh, that deal with our specific franchise. So that includes the, you know, the franchise team, uh, which is you know, the developers. Um, the, the franchise finance team, uh, global publishing, regional publishing uh, groups, uh, consumer insights, uh, both, uh, we actually have two, so we have like the more business focused consumer insights group as well as the, the gameplay focused, uh, led by John Hobson, who's speaking later, uh, and esports. And uh, at Blizzard, you know, we have these eight core values that um, actually we take very seriously, and you can see them in our culture. The most important one, I believe, and also the most visible one, if you interact with people around Blizzard, is gameplay first. Um, we, like I said, we put a lot more emphasis on is the game fun to play, and are we making the rest right decision for the product for the for our, for our, our, our players, uh, as opposed to you know is this the best monetary decision, etc. Um, so. Um, this brings it to, so the kind of the, the best way to describe this design process of Blizzard was uh, um, was I heard from Jeff Kaplan and the way he approaches uh, game design is he um, he thinks of it as a triangle right so there is there's data at one, one end and you know we collect a lot of it like some somebody at Blizzard told me we have more data than Twitter um, and I believe him. Uh, but that is, with, with just that, you, you will not make a, a good game. 
uh, that will inform some of your decisions, um, but largely it's used more to like support a hypothesis that you've uh, generated through either you know community sentiment or your own um, instinct as a designer, or to look for areas to focus in. Like, okay, where do we think there's a problem area? Like, it's kind of like exception. Find looking for exceptions, looking for um, for, for uh, areas to spend your time on. Um, so, I wanted to lead you through a couple of examples of where you know. Um, we were working on something with the designers, trying to present some data to them, and context uh, came into play. Uh, so, you know, back back in 2013, uh, Hearthstone wasn't even announced yet. We were already engaging with the, with the game designers uh, to create a suite of products or you know, dashboards that let them sort of continually evaluate the state of the game. Uh, how well is the game balanced? You know, um, are, are the players having a good experience from that perspective? And uh, you know, we sat down with them, and a, lot, a bunch of them are from Magic the Gathering. They're used to doing more of the qualitative uh, type of uh, analysis. You know, talking to a player is like, "Hey, what do you think is strong? What do you think is weak?" Um, and now we're, you know, all of a sudden, you know, in a, they're, they're they're in an environment where we have every single player's every single card that they've ever played, right? So we have all the data. Like our our sample size is one hundred percent, and. Um, so, you know, what do you really want? And sometimes they know exactly what they want. They're like, I want to know how frequently players are playing a specific class. Uh, I want to know what the win rate of, because it's a one way going game, that's a fairly easy problem to solve. Uh, what's the win rate of a class? But then they also wanted to know, hey, are, are there certain cards that are really strong within our game? Um, and, and that's the question they ask us, and then we have to go back and say, okay, well, what does really strong mean? Uh, so we, you know, iterated on that a little bit, and this is where, like I mentioned, it's really, really important to foster this environment where iteration is okay because we haven't solved this problem before, and we're going to try, and we're probably going to fail, and then we're going to try again. Um, and the the, the 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 metric that we came up with first was, oh, did you, if, if you play the card, did you win or not? Uh, turns out that just tells you which cards players play last, like the win more cards, like a, you know, I only play this card if I'm above here. <coughs> Um, so we iterated on that and we came up with a, a, a KPI which was drawing percent. So if you, again, this is where some familiarity with Hearthstone would help. But uh, if you drew the card um, and it was available for you to play, did it impact your win percentage? Um, and we presented that to the designers and you know, initially in like the alpha, it worked great uh, and then came close beta. And uh, all of a sudden, they, they came back to us and they said, hey, uh, Warrior is eight of the top 10 cards, right? But they have a 50% win rate, and all of their cards are above 50%. Like, something seems fishy here. So this is where the intuition and the computer uh, and the uh, community sentiment clashed with the data. Um, so our thought was, well, where do we go wrong? Well, the first thing as, as analysts that we'll do is say, oh, the data must be wrong. Uh, we're collecting, see, somebody else made a mistake. Um, and, um, and we, you know, we, we UAT'd all the data, and everything seemed fine. Um, and then we looked for logic errors, like, oh, did we, you know, compute that well? Um, that was an issue. So that's when we started sort of zeroing in on the contextual bias that, that might exist. So. We, we had some other reports that we were you know, scanning through, and we noticed this delta uh, in Warrior's, uh, uh, how many turns it takes a Warrior to win versus how many turns it takes a Warrior to lose. Um, and this is where, you know, um, knowing how the game is played by your players and, and being really informed about that really helps you make the right decisions and put the data into the right context. So. Um, at the time, uh, the warrior class, you know, the, the, you know, in Hearthstone, there's like fast decks and slow decks, and slow decks, uh, the games take longer, um, which means they draw more cards, uh, and a lot of times they have draw mechanics. So we base this KPI on you, know, you drawing the card and being able to win, but we're introducing a bias in that you're going to draw more cards. So what happens is. Every time you win, you know, 20 of your cards get a win associated with it, but every time you lose, 10 of your cards get a loss associated with it. Um, so we're, we're, we're biasing towards these slower decks, they look better. Um, and, you know, with other uh, classes, they had 
another deck that was fast, for example, or you know, they had they had a good balance of decks. Whereas for Warrior, the only significant uh, deck was this, this slow deck, which uh, sort of maintained its bias. Um, and um, so we, you know, we sat down with the designers and we said, "Hey, um, how do we fix this?" So we thought, "Well, you know, what we can do is we can say, okay, well, we'll assign you a percent of your win based on how many cards you drew. So we're going to adjust for draw." Well, wrong, because then what happens is you start biasing towards the fast decks because you know they draw four cards and each card gets twenty-five percent of a win, and when they win. And when they lose, they draw 10 cards, and each card gets only 10% of a win. So um, the, the conclusion was like not, neither, there's no right KPI, there's no one right data point that will help you balance the game. Uh, what you need to do is use the data as just a, you know, as a, as a supporting role um, to, you know, uh, to your intuition, to what the community is saying, uh, and all together paint the, the right picture of the, of the game. Um, so, you know, we learned this, and uh, and then I, uh, Overwatch came out, and uh, I, I moved over to support that team, and um, so sometime during again during the beta, and you know, this is not uh, <laughs> this is very old data, so don't put it on Reddit and say this is the status status of the state of the game right now, but. Um, the, sometimes during the, the, the beta, we uh, changed one of our heroes. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, I think we changed the uh, symmetric shield went from like 75 health to 25 health. Um, and the designers made this decision. Actually, I mean, they had their they had their balance reports, and uh, they um, you know they were informed by it when when looking for the problem. But they don't tell them what to do, how to change it. You know, they made a decision on their own. Um, and then they looked at our reports to see what the impact of that decision was. And the uh, one of the lead designers came to me and said, "Hey, you know, we changed Symmetra and we expect her win rate to go down." Um, um, and 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 there, even there, like we, there's biases that we're already accounting for now because Symmetra's only played on defense, and you know we have uh, she's uh, usually switched off after a first point in the map and. So we were trying to adjust for these biases, but what they observed was that after we changed Symmetra, um, that the capture point uh, and hybrid maps shifted in favor of the attacker. So this is another uh, KPI that we're measuring. You know, we have these asymmetrical maps, and we want to see okay, are our attackers winning more or, or less? Um, and we changed one hero, and these maps now had a significant shift in the in the win percentage. Um, and that, that was really strange. We also saw Torbjorn and Bastion have reduced win rates, which are, were changed, very different heroes, or, or different heroes than Symmetra. Um, and we, you know, we, again, we wanted to know like what, what happened wrong. Well, this time, luckily, we had some experience, and we didn't say the data is probably wrong. We said, hey, I think there's a, there's a context here. There's something else in, in, that we can for, probably tease out to explain this story. And um, so uh, we, you know, we started looking through a bunch of other numbers, a bunch of other data points, and we noticed that, um, so Symmetra impacted the attacker win percent because she is a defensive hero. She is exclu almost exclusively played on, on defense, so when, you know, now that she's winning less, defense is winning less, um, whereas she's not impacting, um, she's not decreasing that win rate for attackers as much. Um, also, hybrid and capture point maps well, they're stationary, they have a stationary defense point. And, and Symmetra, for, you, for those of you who don't know, she's like a stationary defense here. She picks an area, she defends it, uh, and if, the, if the, the area of engagement is changing continuously, she's not the best here to choose. Um, so, um, so that, you know, and, and we noticed that she was playing the, those maps uh, much more frequently, about you know, 50 percent of the time, whereas she was played on other maps only like 10 percent of the time. So her change in win rate was reducing the um, the defense win rate for those maps. Uh, and then Tobir and Bastion, well, they're also stationary defense heroes. They they're played with Symmetra uh, very frequently. Um, so while she was actually she actually impacted all of the heroes the same when you adjust for was Symmetra present in that match or not. So. You really need to start looking at 
you know, how how do these data points interact with each other, right? Um, so because Tolkien and Bastion are present with Symmetra a lot more frequently than any other hero, that's when we saw the shift, but really that shift existed elsewhere. It's just hidden by all the, you know, by all the other data that exists. So, you know, that was our hypothesis, and um, we, um, uh, by, by adjusting for Symmetra's presence, we're allowed to prove it. Um, so anyway, so uh, that's basically uh, my presentation, but uh, yeah, I want to reiterate that, uh, reiterate that uh, you, you can't just take data, you know, analytics, and um, use it at face value. Like, you, you really need to um, sort of marry it with, you know, the, the qualitative, the understanding of your player base, the, uh, your intuition of, as a designer uh, when you're making a decision, specifically for design, because it's a very complex problem, you know, like, by measuring active users, uh, that's a that's a fairly straightforward calculation. And there's no much, not much context to it. Either you're playing or you're not. But if we're measuring, you know, how the game is being played, context is very very paramount. All right. Well, that's it for me. So if you guys have any questions, I can't see the the mic, but you have to answer. Them. interesting talk. Um, I have a question about Hearthstone analytics. So as a player, uh, I've seen several rounds of nerfs where uh, certain overpowered cards are downgraded to balance gameplay. I'm curious, what analytics have you done on the sort of opposite situation? Underpowered cards that don't get used often, or when they do, they negatively impact gameplay? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So, um, so we um, actually, we take a um, as in the analytics department, we actually um, interact with different stakeholders very differently, right? So with uh, somebody in finance or marketing, for example, you know, they'll say, hey, we ran, a, ran this promotion, can you tell us how it is? And we'll do, we'll probably go a little bit, a lot, a lot further with them in, as far as, you know, quantifying uh, the effect of that promotion and, um, and giving them recommendations. Whereas with design, generally what we, we try to do is, you know, they're artists, they, we don't want to uh, insert our very uh, quantitative look on things on, on, on how the game is being designed. So we'll usually just give them a suite of self-service self on rails, I call it, uh, dashboards where they can sort of start looking at things and they come to us when they have a very specific question. Um, so, you know, in, in, in that case, we do have you know, the, the same dashboard that informs top cards, also has bottom cards and they look at, it, look at that uh, frequently as well and they try to make adjustments where they feel is right. They also feel like some cards need to be simple, you know, sometimes not as strong, but simple for, for players to sort of learn. Like, you, if every card is strong, then no card is strong, right? So you need to have these cards that are not strong so that you can put other cards into context. Yeah. So you talked about how the early um, Hearthstone analytics informs the uh, Later, Overwatch analytics. Uh, can you talk a little bit about more um, of how Hearthstone continues to iterate on their own analytics? Like, uh, has anything uh, changed from since when you were reporting about when uh, you left that team? Like, uh, you were talking about how you started adjusting toward um, the faster decks, and then uh, you sort of cut off the story there. Is there anything more that you can talk about? Uh, uh, sure, I can. I can mention so. Um, if, what you saw there, that was like us starting. That was us figuring things out. Um, and uh, now we've gotten a lot, a lot smarter. First, you know, we've answered some questions. We've had some problems. We've learned from those. And we now don't, I mean, we still look at card win percent, but we realize that a one card is generally not, um, like you can't, you can't dissect the problem so to such a low granularity. Um, what you really need to look at is kind of a broader picture. So right now they, you know, we have data scientists that develop this, you know, meta clustering and they cluster all the decks based on like the content of the decks themselves and look at the whole picture. Um, and that lets us see, hey, these are the fast decks, right? They interact with these other fast decks in this way and these other slow decks in this other way. And you, you can 
you can have a, you can build a much greater understanding of how the game is being played by your players, and then you can say, okay, now we need to make an adjustment to this deck. For example, this archetype, um, we're gonna uh, maybe look at which card to target, right? So, and that target of the card might be informed by, by our analytics. It might be informed by, hey, we don't think this card is interesting. So let's let's you know let's change that to make it more interesting as, and still get the desired effect of you know, having a game that's balanced. Thank you for this talk. I'm a habit player both, so this is great. Um, one of the things that the community has often asked for in Overwatch has been like the idea of role queue, right? And I've heard Jeff Kaplan talk about how you guys have a lot of things to consider with that. So I'm wondering how user research is kind of impacting such a complex decision of whether to add role queue it. Mm -hmm. um, that would be a better question for John Hobson. He's our user research guy, and he's giving a talk later. So come check it out. Um, um, we that's um, like like I said, we try to answer questions that are more quantitative, right? Um, so we don't want to tell Jeff Kaplan, "Hey, well, you should do this because this." Right? Uh, what we what we like the role we like to take with design is more along the lines of, "Hey," and, and you know they've asked us they've asked us that questions like, "Hey, how many people?" How many games do we have where you have like two mercy mains, right, uh, on the same team? Uh, is that a significant problem or not? Is that something we need to solve for? Or how many games do you have where you have, you know, four support mains? So like the comp the composition of the team that's being generated is not what's considered optimal by the community. Uh, so we'll inform it that way. We'll answer those very specific uh, uh, quantitative questions, and then we let them make the decision. Of, like, do we need to change this? Is this a significant enough of a problem, or, or how do we want to change this, right? Um, so that's kind of the role we take. We don't, we don't, we don't want to overstep, you know, we're not designers, we're just analysts. Hi, um, awesome presentation. Um, you talked a lot about um, the balance for Symmetra and a lot of like the balancing for Overwatch. I'm curious to, to know if um, after that balance change, um, did those specific players that play Symmetra uh, increase their retention within the game? And do you see any relationship uh, with retention or monetization for those specific players that you increase their balance? Mm -hmm. um, so we actually, um, as far as retention, um, we players shift around a lot, right? So we we actually don't treat our players as like, oh, this is a Symmetra main, so he's gone. Like. You might be gone for different reasons. It's really hard to get to like, the causality of it, right? Um, this is also early on in the, in, the, in the beta, like closed beta, very select audience. Um, so we didn't really look at it too much. And the monetization, we didn't look at it all because we actually um, don't want to, um, we don't want to um, try, like we don't want to influence design by, by those types of questions. Like I said, gameplay, gameplay first, right? So. Um, whether, like, if this is the best decision for the game, it's the best decision for the game. Uh, and we're, we don't want to sell more copies of Overwatch uh, by, like, changing Symmetra, uh, you know, in a meaningful way. Uh, being told I have five more minutes for questions, so. Hey there, so uh, great presentation, really interesting stuff. You spoke a lot about um, just card balance, Euro balance across those two titles. Um, but you did allude to uh, a lot of the design teams kind of come to you and ask for certain things. I don't know if you could expand a little bit on some of the other KPIs or metrics that your team identifies and uh, builds reports against and how you come or how you arrive at those metrics. Sure. So, I mean, I can talk more broadly about our, our process. Uh, we generally engage with the teams very early on now. Uh, when I first joined Blizzard uh, eight years ago, uh, you know, Star was, StarCraft was launching and we we're going through the design and saying, hey, what kind of data do you want? Um, and so now we are involved in the alpha stages, you know, measuring how uh, people around Blizzard are playing the, the, the game first. Um, we, and we sort of, you know, from our experience, we have a suite of data that we, we start collecting and then we start getting specific data that's more relevant to that game. And that's informed by, you know, the communication that we have with the designers. Um, as far as like, what KPIs, that really depends, right? Um, uh, depends what's important. We can't do everything. 
uh, and it depends what's important to the game designers. So we, there might be a feature that they're really interested in, uh, and they really want to measure the engagement around that. So we'll really deep dive, and we'll have you know things like uh, you know how many people were successful in each of the different difficulties for like uh, the uprising uh, event in Overwatch, you know, which is like a PVE event, um, kind of new to the, to the game or different from core gameplay, um, and. What was the skill level of those players in, in, in competitive? Right? So, like, are they high? Are they highly skilled players? Does skill matter? Uh, how much does skill matter? Um, so we can really deep dive on that. And then for other things like, um, like uh, for example, the custom games, right? Um, we'll look at things like, well, how many people are playing custom games? Is this a popular mode, right? And then we might deep dive on a few of the, the more popular ones, but we don't collect as rich of a, a data set. Um, on those, uh, on, you know, on that specific feature, um, it really depends on what they're focusing on. Sometimes, you know, we don't collect data on, on, on a feature that's already been launched, but then it becomes a focus, right? Um, so we try to be as agile as we can. Uh, you know, we constantly instrument messages and decommission messages, and our telemetry constantly keeps shifting. Uh, yeah, there's no, there's no like one answer. <laughs> I think that's it, so thank you very much. Uh